Hello and welcome. For this first part of the tutorial, we are going to start with a clean Autodesk Inventor session. The first thing we are going to do is to create a new project. To do so, move to this button project in the Get Started tab and click on to project. By default, the default project is selected as you can see. To create a new project, move to this new button and you will have the Inventor Project Wizard dialog box open. By default, this new single user project option is selected. So we are going to keep it like this and click the next button. And we will enter a project name. I will call mine Parallel Casing. And the next step is to define the project folder or the workspace in which all your files will be saved. To do so, move to this button and click to pause for project location. In my case, I have this Inventor Spiral Casing Tuto previously created and inside I have some subfolders. I will select this CAD folder. You can create a new folder using this button create a new folder but I have this already created so I will select it and OK so here we have the path for the folder where your files will be selected and this is the name of your project file now we can click on this finish button and our project is created but why do we need this? In Autodex Inventor, a project file is a file that will keep track of all the files and folders in your project. It will contain project-related information such as directories, templates, locations, styles, standard part libraries, and so on. So, as you can see in this bottom window, we have the location we defined previously and we can also include some file and this file will mainly be a style library files or we can specify if the style library is read only or write and read so to change this you have to right click and select one of these two options okay we are going to keep it as it is it, it is not going to matter for our project and we will hit save and we'll have this we accept it and then done okay now that our project file is created we can start a new part and this new part will be our master part basically the master part will contain all the sketches and the parameters which will be later used to create our model so to create a new part move to this new button and then we have the choice between a set of templates english metric and mold design we will choose metric and because most of parts we will create are sheet metal parts and the thickness is almost always the same 12 millimeters we will use a sheet metal template so we we'll select this one and click on create to create our master part so we let inventor compute and create the part okay you can see that a new part is created and by default it is named part one and that we are in the sheet metal environment what we are going to do right away is to hit this save button and as you can see we are already inside our working folder which is this card folder i will name the part master part and hit save now that we have our master part created we can start building our sketches Let's go back to our prints for a minute. Our first sketch will contain what I define as the center line of our spiral casing. And basically it will be this set of lines connecting the point three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. 
and since we cannot get to that directly we will have to build some construction geometry first so the construction geometries will be these radial lines and these will help us to define these endpoints where the center lines segments will pass through okay so back to inventor and we are going to start a sketch on the xy plane so first you have to click on this plus to expand the origin folder then select the xy plane and next you can either click on this start to the sketch or select this create sketch now we will use the line tool to create the first radial line so we select line and from the origin we will input as the length 685.5 and right away press the tab key to input the angle value as 20 degrees and then enter to finish the first line now we can use the mouse wheel to pan the view or hit this zoom all button to fit the line in the graphic area now we are going to create the remaining lines and as you can see the line tool is still active so we are going to proceed to the next one we are not going to input the dimensions or the angle this time we are just going to create the line and we will dimension them later so second third one origin of five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fourteen and 15 press enter you have a perpendicular constraint which was created for I don't know which one again and this one we are going to select it and delete it we don't want that to happen okay now we are going to bring this line to the proper dimension and angular spacing so we will use the general dimension tool and select the line and as you move away you can see that a vertical dimension is created this is not what we want we want a length dimension so to fix that what you can do is to right click and select align and now you have a length dimension so for this dimension the value should be 673 and the angle between this line and the next one should also be 20 degree and the way to link this angle to the first one is to select this and as you can see the value is now replaced by a parameters which is 20 degree so enter so we are going to do the same for the next one this one so move away you can see you have a vertical dimension and a different way to create an aligned dimension is to move back to the line click on it again and there it is so for this one the value will be 660 and the angle dimension also 20 degrees for this one we will have 644.5 and again 20 degrees this one 20 degrees and the length should be 630.5 again 20 degrees and 
de length 614.5 20 degrees and find 96.5 20 degrees again and this time 578.7 20 link and then and then we will have 558 next another 20 degrees and a distance of 553.5 and we stop here because as you can see the color of this line is dark blue instead of clean as the others that means that when we were creating lines there is some constraint that that was automatically added and this is causing the line to be fully constrained so this will cause us trouble so the best thing to do is to select it and delete it so dimension tool again and keep on adding dimension so 20 degrees and this one should be 507.5 and again 20 and this time 476 20 degrees oops I forgot to link that and the dimension should be 435 and we need two additional lines so line tool is again and like this and like that then zoom in a little bit and use the middle button to pan then dimension tool 20 degree length with this one and then align dimension which is 3 3 excuse me 3 77.3 and then to finish this one 20 degree link to this one oops remove this and the length is to be 311.5 okay so far we went from this endpoint 15 to this endpoint 1 and what we are going to do next is to add this additional line at 23.5 degrees from the horizontal axis and with a arbitrary length and then we will draw the center lines and then come back to define the proper line for this one so back to inventor we'll activate the line tool again so endpoint up to somewhere like this then we will use the tab key and enter 23.5 then enter and enter again then we will come back to this endpoint one and then we'll zoom in to be sure that we will select the endpoint to create our spiral casing center line so this one from this one to 
let's pan a little bit to this one this one to this one this one to this one and this to this this to this as you can see while we are clicking there are these magnetic line which are automatic snap so you have to be really careful when you select the end one okay so this two this this two this and this two this so the green dot gives you an indication that you are snapping on on an end point so and this to this so this should be the end point 15 so we need to draw two additional lines so this one and this one so from this to somewhere like this and a vertical line to finish then escape now we will add dimensions from this end point to the center point and this dimension should be this 900 and we'll have another horizontal dimension at 721 so this one 900 and to this from this from okay horizontal dimension and this one 721 and the length of this one should be 538 and to finish this we will add a horizontal line from this end point like so make sure it's horizontal and the length can be left arbitrary for the time being and what we will have to do next is to add a dimension a vertical dimension from this end point 17 to this line and this dimension will be 300 not clearly lisive here but on the prints you can read 200 4.5 so dimension from this endpoint to this line and we will input 200 204.5 okay so i didn't mention this dimension on my enhanced print i will say because as we will see later this might not work as we expect so we'll see that later with that said we will finish this sketch and let's look from the front view and rotate this like this and we will rename it send the line okay so now that we have the center line in place the next step will be to create a bunch of cycles and these cycles will help us to define the inner profile of our spiral casing from where we will derive the location of the cross section sketches plane and onto this cross section sketch planes we will be able to create our cross section sketches from where the sheet metal components will be derived so we will do that in the next part of this tutorial and i hope to see you there and thanks for watching